Hi everyone, Tu Bishvat. No tree planting this year, but lots of connecting to the land of Israel, the sounds of ancient music in the Bible Land Museum, and the new Israeli Salad Jewish Music Magazine, Soul Tuning. You're watching Israeli Salad. Let's begin. Shalom and welcome to Israeli Salad. Tu Bishvat, the 15th day of the month of Shvat, marks the beginning of the new year for trees. It is customary to plant trees and partake of the fruits of the land of Israel to mark this occasion. This year, Tu Bishvat fell on January 22nd and was different than in previous years. This year is the year of Shemitah, the sabbatical year. All agricultural work in the land of Israel must stop during every seventh year in the Shemitah cycle. And it is that Shemitah year that forces us to stop and think about the source of all the bounty of this land. We may work hard to plant and harvest and in general struggle for our livelihood, but it is Ribbono Shalolam, the master of the world, who is the source of all blessings. A rabbi in Israel, Rabbi Yosef Tzvi Rimon, told me a story about a kid who runs to his father saying, Father, Father, what should we do? What will be with the Shemitah? So the father says, What happens, son? It's raining, the son says. The rain will water the fields and the crops. It's Shemitah, that's forbidden. Well, the father tells his son, that's just it. On Shemitah, there's only one who continues to work the land, Hashem. And so back to Tu Bishvat. This year, there was no tree planting on Tu Bishvat. This year, we leave it to Hashem to take care of the tree planting tradition. So let's take a look at how the young boys and girls of Israel marked the new year for trees this year. The youth movements did not hold their traditional planting trips on this year's Tu Bishvat because of the Shemitah year. But planting or not, Bnei Akiva decided to mark the day in a way that strengthened the kids' bond to the land of Israel. Shemitah is like the Sabbath. There comes a year when you stop and think and gather strength for the great project of reconnecting to the land of Israel. Our kids are in several places, at Nachal Habasor, at Modin, at Mazkeret Batya, where we remember the land of Israel's first Shemitah observance in modern times. And of course, we are here in Nachal Kana. The fact that the kids walk through Nachal Kana and see Karnei Shomron above them, they see Emmanuel and other communities, makes them better understand the importance of our presence here in the land of Israel. This is the connection we want to achieve on Tu Bishvat. The kids seem to have gotten the message. We came here to travel in the land of Israel, to enjoy the scenery. We like hiking. We want everything to bloom and flourish in this country. To see the land of Israel, to know it and see its beauty. This is how you connect to Eretz Yisrael through your legs. Members of Bnei Akiva led the project of settling the land of Israel in Yesha, in Judea and Samaria. I think this second generation feels completely at home in these paths. That may be the most important point. In the past, 20 years ago, we walked with some hesitation, but now we feel at home here. As for the morale, it's high as usual. This year, the Ariel Youth Movement decided to identify on Tu Bishvat with the uprooted. In honor of Tu Bishvat, this being a Shemitah year, the Ariel movement decided to strengthen the bonds with the movement branches in the uprooted communities to strengthen our belief and our roots in the land and to hold an event for identification with the Gush Katif communities in general and especially the ones that have Ariel branches in them. We started the day in the expelled communities branches at Nitzan and Ein Surim and Yated, where we have the branches that were originally at Neveda Kalim and Atzmona, and we received explanations about the places and saw the living conditions there. We then held a concluding event here at Shomriya, where the former Atzmona and Kfardarom communities are residing. When we showed our solidarity with the Gush Katif people, we showed that we have not forgotten them. We appreciate everything that they are doing, and we think there is no more fitting day than Tu Bishvat to deepen the bond with them. The movement's director, Yossi Fardi, says that faith is at the center of everything. 
We all came here to strengthen them and hug them, and also to be strengthened by them and to witness how they emerged from such a great crisis to such great faith. The Ariel movement ended the event with a performance by singer Udi Davidi. Their friends from Bnei Akiva marked Tubishvat with a trip to Nachal Kana and ended the day at Kerne Shamron where various fun activities awaited them. This year is one in which we hug the nation and the land. It is a year in which the nation of Israel and the land of Israel unite. We want all of Israel to gather together to shout to Hashem with their whole heart and soul so that Hashem will save us. He will send us the Mashiach, the whole thing, man. The temples, parties, paradise, brother. Despite being tired from the hike, it seems that the songs of the land have a strength that energizes the youth. Before we talk about our new Jewish music magazine, let's go back in time a little to ancient biblical music as we visit a special exhibition that took place in Jerusalem. A unique exhibition was opened in the Bible Lands Museum in Jerusalem, Sounds of Ancient Music. The exhibition presents rare finds of ancient musical instruments enhanced with modern reproductions. The importance of the exhibition is that it shows the centrality and significance of music in ancient times. Music was an integral part of the day-to-day -day life, religious life, ceremonial aspects of life, some people live music from morning to night. It dominated their lives. I feel this exhibition connects us to the people who lived back then, from all cultures. It shows the universalism, the common denominator. Music always served the basic needs of humans. For example, if I look at a flute today, it's not so different from the ancient flute. Visitors are offered a glimpse at music's centrality in the daily life and rituals of the peoples in the land of Israel, the ancient Near East, and the classical worlds of Greece and Rome. There is a lot here that teaches us of the centrality of music in the Holy Temple, as we see musical instruments on coins from the time of the Temple. This harp, the Harp of David, Kinor David, was reproduced by Moshe Frumin. Many harps of David are seen on coins from the time of Bar Kokhba. We always see the rounded bottom of the instrument. I found a source where someone wrote that they think that this part was made from the stomach of a cow. And on the coins, you can clearly see deer horns. So I combined both. And this is what I got, Kinor David. I've been involved in this field for many years, and it always uplifts me, trying to reveal yet another piece of the history of the nation of Israel. And we can now know a little more about what used to be, and this is very moving, thinking that maybe, with a harp like this, King David played before King Shaul. Multimedia computer stations enrich the exhibition with a presentation of all the types of ancient instruments, enabling the visitors to virtually play the instruments. But some prefer the actual touch of a wooden flute to the virtual experience. There is something lofty about these instruments. You connect to the spirit of the ancient times. Music and religion are inseparable. If you want to connect to your source, this music is a tool to connect. With all this experience, will the organizers help prepare the instruments for the Third Temple? With much happiness, 
I'd like to recreate the past. And now our new musical production. We are proud to present the new Jewish music video magazine called Soul Tuning, produced by INN TV's Yair Peled. Our first experience at Soul Tuning will be with Hanan Rosin. So sit back and enjoy. The, the music is a mixture of African rhythms and Jewish melodies and traditional melodies, both African and, and Jewish. A lot of the words are from Tehillim and carry the wisdom of, um, of our forefathers. Hanan Rosin, 24, from South Africa, is the lead singer of the Adama Kadmon Band. Hanan is a new immigrant to Israel, an Ole Chadash. His songs and melodies combine Jewish and African music. My name is Hanan Rosen, and I come from South Africa. I'm a Jewish musician, Jewish African musician. Uh, some people call me Janan, <laughs> and um, I, I infuse Jewish music with African music and African music with Jewish song. Okay. And uh, I, I grew up in um, South Africa in an amazing time where black people and white people started mixing and started infusing music together, and um, I grew up listening to African music coming from from the streets, coming from you know from the taxis or from you know just the the pulse on the street was was African music. And okay, so I personally uh, uh, led a, a band in in South Africa. With, um, with, uh, with musicians from Soweto, from the townships, um, and Israeli musicians as well. We performed, we recorded, we've, we've uh, released an album in South Africa, um, and uh, it's, it's called Majuda. <laughs> I, I immigrated the music too, mm -hmm. and the music's come with, come with me to, to Israel. And, uh, and we perform here, uh, we perform the music, and we're developing the music and producing. Most, most of the, the, the words are about, about uh, uh, unity or, or um, humanity, commonality, um, about, the, about the, uh, the responsibility that we have as, as the Jewish nation to, to, to tell people about the oneness in the world and uh, about, um, about, about God, the... the, the, the the old being. So, so we, we've, we've created the Jerusalem Music Network, which uh, produces and develops and manages um, unique world, Jewish world music artists, musicians, and performers. And, um, and we, we've been, be, been developing that under, under the production of, of Yehuda Glantz, who, who was doing uh, Latin, Latin Hasidic music 25 years ago. People that, 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 have, that, that feel that they have, uh, they have something to add, they can approach us, and we can, we can produce the music. The, the song Sibuye Kaya, it's, it's sung in Zulu, uh, and, it, and it literally means we've come home. And, it's, and it talks about uh, people finding, uh, finding their home and the, and the the commonality which, which, which is to be found both in Africa and in, and in Israel. The, the, the rhythm, is, the rhythm is, um, is a Zimbabwean rhythm. It comes from, from Zimbabwe and it's a, it's a cross rhythm between a 6-8 and a 4-4. And it's like... And... Um, and it and it speaks about uh, about Siahambaish Latini. We 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 whether you're going out to the bushes and you see and you sing the animals, or whether you you're in town and you're with your friends, there's there's, there's a, a, a commonality of feeling at home. Siahambaish Latini, Siahamba, Sibonai Nyama, Sijaivae Patia, Sijaiva. Sibuye 
Fresh Latini Si Hamba Si Bonai Nyonyama Si Jaiva E Patia Si Jaiva Si Buyele Ikaya Oh yeah Judah Si Buyele Kaya Oh yeah Judah Sihamba esh latini, sihamba, sibona ingonyama. Israeli salad. We'll be back next time with more flavors and other good things from Israel. Until then, shalom from all of us at Arutz Sheva's Israel National TV.